Hey crafters, it's Janet with Crafting It Up in Creations coming at you today with a craft fair series on packaging. Now this is just one way that you could package these little magnets and it's basically just a video to just give you some ideas of how you could set this up. Certainly you don't need this die. Um, you can just cut like a four inch piece of paper and score it in half or fold it in half and put it over top of these baggies. And you could really do this in a very economical way to do these for teacher gifts, coworkers, or even a craft show as I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna do like a series this year and I'm starting out early, so don't be impressed. This is probably the earliest I've ever started anything like this. Um, for a craft show, but I wanted to do it so that I could share along the way um, of what I do. Because typically, um, it's the end of summer before I start a lot of this process, and usually by then, even some of the craft stores have even started putting out Christmas stuff. I know Hobby Lobby has already started setting some stuff out, which kind of makes my stomach turn a little, but at the same time, it's fun to get be able to do projects ahead of time. Now this is the die cut machine I use. Um, this is the Vintage Big Kick. They also have um, also the um, Big Shot, which they're exactly the same machine. They use all the same cutting plates, um, the same uh, pad that you put in with the tabs that uh, allows you to cut different thicknesses. And I love this machine. I actually had one from Stampin' Up! before that was the Big Shot and the crank died on it. I used it so much. And as you can see, my pads are very well loved. Um, I, like I say, when I get on a roll especially, I use that, that die cutting a lot and I love this thing. So if you haven't invested in one of these and are thinking about it, I know Hobby Lobby has some on sale right now. They're Spellbinders. Um, some of them they have actually put on clearance. I guess maybe it's new packaging. Um, so check those sales out. Check your Tuesday morning. Um, use your coupons. I was told recently that uh, Michaels accepts the coupons for the Spellbinders. Um, I saw this online uh, for the Spellbinders one. And if I were going to buy one now, I would want that Spellbinders um, Deluxe. I think it's like an eight and a half um, area to cut dies on and that would include some of the really bigger dies. And basically what I'm showing you is that each tab on this standard cutting plate, um, or it's not the actual cutting plate, but it's just the standard pad to use the um, different uh, pieces in, because um, this isn't the cutting surface. You still need to use your cutting plates. But this helps with um, really thin dies, the sizzlets, the embossing folders, texture plates, the really thin metal dies that really aren't Sizzix. Um, I want to say they used to be Cuddlebug, but I can't quite remember. I've only bought a few of those at one time. Um, but they're, they were wonderful little dies. Um, but with the um, popular um, popularity of like the embossing folders a lot of those texture plates aren't even used anymore but it tells you on this um, what the sandwich is that you need to use and that's what I really love about the multi multi-purpose platform um, it tells you what you need and some of the other machines um, you have to really do a lot of research in order to figure out what the cutting is on it and once you get used to it you would probably be fine now that micro pour tape that I had, I sometimes use to hold my dies down because as you can see, my uh, plates are wonky and they are very uh, lopsided. And there is supposedly a way to keep these straight. I do try to even um, fluctuate and flip them, you know, when I use them. But for whatever reason, I still end up with a curve in them. Um, like I say, they're very well loved. You can buy new ones pretty pretty easily. I think they're like $10 a set. So this is a, a um, top note die that Stampin' Up! brought out several years ago. I used to be a demonstrator, but I only did it to buy the, buy the supplies, I hate to say. Um, but I 
have had this top note die for some time now and I absolutely love it. It looks like it stitches around that area and it's just really pretty. And you just put it in between the cutting plates. You do not need the multi-purpose platform for this one because it cuts very well. Um, with the steel rule die that this is, you can cut through layers of fabric, layers of cardstock. I did two at a time because that stitching comes out very well on two. When you start adding three and four, um, the stitching is still there, but it, it leaves almost like an impression of the one above it. So as you can see, I cut these out um, the wrong way because when I ended up sticking them on my toppers or for the bags for the toppers, this way doesn't look right because it needs to be in fact folded from this way. And so hopefully um, what I'm showing you will keep you from making the same mistake I did. So these larger gems were from Michael's and I put them inside these dollar tins from the Dollar Tree and I decorated them with a piece of um, half inch ribbon or half inch cardstock around the edge just to kind of um, dress them up a little. And these are larger. I'm going to link that video down below that I made these with um, in case you're interested in that. And then, but these are so pretty, but they are larger. Now these other uh, gems are used from the Dollar Tree, but they're not the smallest ones. They're, they're the larger ones that the Dollar Tree carries. And this was a piece of a magnet that you can use in a locker at school to kind of decorate your locker. And I thought that maybe I would cut some of those out and adhere the magnets to it but it didn't work at all. This is not a very strong magnet. You can still use these for your metal dies, the thin metal dies, to hold them in place. So if you wanna put them in your packaging and hold them up so you can see them, they still work out really well. Now before I got started, um, cause I tend to try to move quickly, um, I had used the plain white top note dies to put all of my magnets on because I plan to decorate the tops of them really nice but that didn't work out <laughs> if I could go back and do it over again I would use these really cute um, top note dies that had the decorations on them and I would have stuck them to that white cardstock because that was some 110 pound white cardstock I just bought a huge pack of it at Walmart but look for it to say 110 pounds because um, some of it's copy paper some of it is easier to use on a printer like if you're making printer pages but this is a thicker weight cardstock and it's cheaper that way so and we're trying to make a little bit more bang for our buck so these were the smallest bags i had um, they don't quite go around the top edge as you can see a little bit of it hangs out but i decided that i was just going to leave it at that and then they do have these little um, loop bags at the Dollar Tree. These are shorter. Some of them are taller and longer. And there's 40 in a pack of this. And I'm gonna pull one out and show you that if you don't have access to even the self-sealing bags, that uh, these are also an option. Because um, if you're gonna give these to coworkers or teachers and not sell them, then you wouldn't really have a reason to pull it out of the package and show people you know what exactly is in it so that's one reason that I kind of chose to self sealing bags I purchased a lot of them a long time ago to put cards in um, but my cards generally don't sell at a craft fair show very well I don't know if people don't want to write something in the center of them which is partly partially what I think is the problem they want something to already be handwritten or stamped inside um, to say what they want to say versus um, being blank on the inside and that's kind of hard to do because you never know quite what to say or how many different cards you would make in order to do that but these fit in there very nicely and like I say it would be great if you're just going to give them as gifts or even for a craft show um, to save some money now these were some um, adhesive dots that I've had for quite some time and I thought that I would just use them to stick on the magnets to stick to the cardstock to hold them in place and that way when the um, 
party buys them, uh, they can just pull it off, kind of roll that glue dot off and stick it to the refrigerator. And I just take them all off and stick them right down to that cardstock. Like I say, I would have um, decorated the cardstock a little bit more if I had been thinking a little bit more ahead. Um, I just decided to kind of go ahead and do packaging for this yesterday. And hopefully, you know, just some of the things that I do and show you that I've done will give you other ideas. And like I say, if you don't have this um, top note die, you can always use just a strip of paper. I would cut it like maybe a four by four and you can use decorative scissors. You can just use your um, Fisker's cutting tool or anything to make a straight edge. Some of those come with uh, special blades that do just the same thing as the decorative scissors do and you can dress them up that way and even if they're a straight edge it's still going to make the packaging look nice. Now I left a lot of room at the top and I go back and I'm going to actually push the magnets up a little and take that bottom up some and that's where I'll show you. I'll do that in just a minute. Um, but basically, I just fold this top note in half. If you have a scoreboard, you could even score it real easy and then do it um, just to make sure that it's really straight. Um, I didn't have it out with me right at the moment. I'm kind of upstairs doing this on the kitchen table, of course. I've uh, taken over that table for the day. And I kind of put it on there and see that I've got a lot of room there, so I decide to unseal the back which is really easy. It doesn't pull that adhesive off and I'm just going to slide that piece up there a little bit more and shut it. And for the most part it looks like all of them are about the same and I just basically eyeballed that. And then I'm going to add this topper to it and I just show you this one because um, I didn't figure that this isn't a hard process or anything. Um, mostly this is to give you ideas. And this is my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. And I'm going to use that and make sure you go through the bag. Um, I had one that I actually um, did right at the top and didn't hit the bag, but I thought that was um, not too bad. A lot of times if you add some embellishments to it, you can even hide that staple very easily. But I think it kind of looks cute, especially since it's so small. Um, it just looks kind of cute on there anyway. So this is um, from the Boho Paper Pack, and I'm going to show you the paper packs that I used at the end. And I'm just going to cut out one of the little images and add it to the packaging. And I do that with um, a lot of the others. I tried to pull images that were off the scrapbook paper itself to add or use punches to punch out coordinating paper. And it worked out really well. And I'm just gonna cut out this little piece that says, let's be adventurers, darling. And I'm gonna add it to the front. And Joann's is having a, a clearance sale right now. They've got several punches that are on clearance. Um, of course, the Tiny Attacher was on sale last week, and that's what I actually went in looking for. They had this feather punch that was on clearance for $8.47, and I'm going to just kind of add it with some coordinating paper to that as well. And this is what it looked like. And I love my punches. Um, I'd like to do another series of just different things that you can do with your punches in the future. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that bell, that'll notify you every time I upload a new video. And that'll give you an idea of different things um, that I like to share that I come up with. And a lot of times other viewers even give me ideas as well. So I'm going to attach this with one of these really strong adhesive dots. They're pretty strong. I am a little concerned that they're too strong um, for when people will pop these magnets off. But it was the best option I had for making them stay. Because I know that a lot of times if they're not strong enough, you know, then these gems are kind of heavy and they'll just fall off. But that's that packaging. 
and I'm going to kind of show you some of the top notes that I cut and of course they're in the wrong um, you know their uh, landscape versus portrait um, and if I like I said if I knew what I knew now I would have used some of these for the decoration on the background versus worrying about so much of the toppers and now basically I'm just going to show you all the different ones that I did and like I say if I had it to do all over again I would kind of make the inside a little more dressed up too um, I think that would have kind of added to it but this may give you some ideas of different things you can do even make yours even better or the same it doesn't really matter just hopefully it'll get your creative juices going um, I did use a background paper on this one and like I say this the other paper was maybe an 80 pound cardstock and the white was 110 so I did attach it to it so that it would hold up those magnets real well. They're not that heavy but for cardstock they kind of are and especially with a magnet um, glued to the back of them. Now the other process video that I did where I showed how to make them, I'll link that down below so if you're interested in seeing that, um, I'll even put it in like a play along list for you to view. But these are just some different ideas. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, I leave those down below too. I do appreciate um, feedback from you guys. I read all my comments. Um, I try to respond in a timely manner. Um, usually within a week, I try to, to get on here. Um, sometimes if I have like a little bit of um, downtime at work at night, I will go back and try to read through those. And a lot of them make me smile. So I have thought about doing a video on some of the funny ones or even some of the mean ones. <laughs> because I'm like, really? Do you talk to people that way? But it's funny. I, I kind of um, shrug it off for the most part. But I do, I, like I say, I read them all. And for the most part, I would say 95% at least comments are very sweet. I have a lot of people that comment on almost every single video and it means the world to me. I really do appreciate it. Now that little mermaid one actually had some bubbles in the actual gem itself. And I thought that was really super cool since, you know, it's the um, sea life uh, type of magnets that I did and I just thought that was really neat. So this is a Stampin' Up! Punch as well. Um, it is a tag and I love this one. It's a decent size. Um, it punches really nicely and I've had that one for a while. Now this scallop tart was one of them that I got from Joann's on clearance and it was $8.47. I guess that was the going price for the punches. Um, and of course I got the feather and I used those on several of these packages and that is that tag punch as well and this has got the little unicorn and the fairies and some of that paper and this is the magic hour paper by um, at Michaels it's a hot buy paper pad and I love it I actually bought two of them and um, only because they were only five dollars a piece but I love that paper. I plan to make a scrapbook out of it for my niece. But this just came out really cute. I just tried to cut out um, or punch out some of those images and then, you know, put the, the jewel over top of that. And I really love these little boho pieces. I love how everything matches. That's kind of the fun part about doing it this way is that it coordinates so well. and they come out really nice. I can't complain. I've got to decide how I'm going to set them up at the craft show. Um, I have a few like little straggler um, magnets that I plan to use to show people what they are, you know, so that they kind of know what they're buying. Um, but these are so stinking cute. And on these, I'm going to do $2 a pack. Um, on the ones in the tin, they'll be $3 because the tin itself is a dollar and that part's reusable. So I figure that, you know, kind of makes it a little bit more worth it. So this is the Magic Hour paper pad that um, is a hot buy paper pad. Never ever buy these when they're not on sale. 
They put them on sale so often that you can always get it. Um, at least 50% off, but a lot of times they will put these where you can get the, the 12 by 12 pad for $5. And it's a steal. Now these other little paper pads, um, they put them on sale routinely too. Um, and I would definitely say not to buy these unless they're on sale too, because when you can get that 12 by 12 for five bucks, you hate to pay like $6 for these. Um, but I've got uh, Boss Babe, Dream Chaser, and Faith Filled. And I have used these on my um, shakers. I did a video where I did little um, bottle cap shakers and I used a lot of the images out of these as well. Um, I'll also go ahead and link that one down below too. Um, but the Boss Babe has some coffee um, themed type papers in there and I just absolutely loved it. Um, of course all of them have really nice um, images in them and I've used things out of all of them in several different projects now. So. I absolutely love them. And then this one is the Bohemian Babe. It has some of the cactus images in it. Not a whole, whole lot, but decent. Um, I really like the bicycle. I'm a sucker for bicycles no matter what. Um, but I tried to keep it to where I could have four gems that kind of all pertain to each other. And there's only like the one picture of the bicycles in here. So I didn't end up using that. Maybe in the future though. And then this is the Boho um, Vibes. This one is from Hobby Lobby. I got this one 50% off, so it was regularly $9.99, and I got it for $5, $4.99. And I love the images in this. I actually had three sets that I used for this. And I want to say there's at least four to six of each image in this paper pad. So you've got plenty to work with. Um, I really love the antlers too. I kind of wish I would have used one of those in one of the magnets as well. But maybe if I go back to Michael's and get some of the bigger ones, then I'll do some of those. But I really love the colors in this. Um, but it's boho vibes. Oh, it was $8.99. So actually it was $4.50 um, at Hobby Lobby half off. And then I'm going to show you just some of the ones again that I made, and that's using that Boho Vibes um, paper pack. And that was just mainly a chance for me to even let you know that um, this is a series that I'm going to do for a craft show fair series. Um, I probably will not do one until the fall. And like I say, I'm getting way ahead of myself right now on trying to prepare some things for this. Just because, you know, recording everything and trying to go over it with you takes time in itself. And I'm actually trying to prepare a little more than what I typically do. Um, and questions, comments, anything, leave that down below. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and um, spending some time with me. I hope you all have a great rest of your week, and I hope you get a chance to craft it up. Take care. Bye.